Google Pixel Fold three weeks later, honest review. So $17.99 is the price. Hashtag Team Pixel, hashtag gift from Google. They did send this out as a gift, um, but I'm not required to say anything particular or even required to technically make the review. So I'm choosing to make the review for you guys here. And I just have to disclose that for you. Now, introducing this phone right here, the key specifications that matter, we have a 5.8 inch OLED display on the front that is 120 Hertz. So it's pretty smooth on the inside display. It's a 7.6 inch display. That's also OLED here, capable of up to 1000 nits on the inside or, and it does have 120 Hertz as well. So do keep that in mind. 1450 nits peak outdoors. And then on the front, the front display can actually hit around 1200 nits or 1550 nits peak on the front. So these are pretty good specifications. Also 408 pixels per inch on the front with around about 378 on the inside. So that means a pretty sharp, you know, text on the display. This phone also features the Google Tensor G2 with 12 gigabytes of RAM, very similar, if not the same to the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which has been pretty darn good phone as well. 4821 milliamp hour battery in here, which makes this one of the better phones when it comes to foldables with the size of the battery, but we'll talk about how it actually performed later. And then the main camera is a 48 megapixel triple with a 10.8 megapixel telephoto and a also and a 10.8 megapixel ultra wide camera on board. So those are basically the key specifications, Android 13 and, and several years of updates to come like three major, we do have security coming after that as well. So definitely pretty decent specs out of the gate. Let me give you a take on the body, the build quality. So we do have aluminum build here, but it does kind of feel and look like stainless steel. You could see a pretty thin smartphone here in the Google Pixel Fold. This thing unfolded is literally only 5.8 millimeters. So it's actually thinner than most phones out there when unfolded. But truthfully, you know, I kind of consider the, th the true thickness when it's like this, because this is how I'm going to hold it throughout the day, most of the day. So at that point, the thickness is 12.1 millimeters and the weight of this phone is 283 grams. So definitely heavier than most phones, but it's a, it's a foldable and it's definitely lighter than some other foldables that have existed before. So it's very thin, but not super, super light, um, but definitely, you know, comfortable because of the size of this phone. It's not super tall. You can see right here, the Galaxy Z Fold 4, definitely a taller phone, maybe more comfortable, you know, like this, but definitely I find this to be more natural feeling in the hand. I'm really struck by the 5.8 inch display. I've really enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite iPhone displays was the 5.8 inch iPhone 10. And you could see not only does it have the rounded corners, just like that phone used to have, but it also has a 5.8 inch display on the front. So this is very similar to that in terms of the size and how it feels on the front. And I find that very natural. I've really enjoyed this on the front display of this phone with just how it feels. I also really, really liked the rounded corners. They feel very natural in the hand. They're not super sharp. And while this hinge is quite thick over here by comparison to, you know, just these parts, it gives you a nice place to put these fingers right here. So I really like that. And I just think Google ergonomically nailed this phone for our first attempt as they improve the build quality and as they improve just kind of the overall, you know, just durability of this device. I just think it's going to be better and better. This is a great first attempt though. And you'll see right here, the camera bar does stick a little bit off the body, but I'm okay with that because most cases protect that camera bar anyway, which you'll probably get a case for, including maybe Google's official case as well. Now, three weeks later, I can tell you that the hinge feels super durable as well. It doesn't make any weird noises. It's super silent and quiet. And there's a very satisfying thunk when this phone does close. You hear that one more time. Very satisfying. And honestly, when I first unfolded this, I was shocked by how well the engine, uh, they engineered the hinge. Uh, usually the hinges on first edition folds are not the best, but this one was pretty good. But these kind of right here are probably why you can see how they attach both displays right here. And um, that hinge really does give you a very satisfying area to go ahead and create the fold right there. And then 
it just feels like it'll be solid built. It feels like it could definitely last. I will say that it's not the easiest phone to open when you don't have a case on it. You kind of got to find an area. Once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. But there, you know, it's not the easiest fold to open. There's not like any slots. You kind of just got to dig your fingers in there and open it up. But once you do, you are presented with this inner display. Now, the quality of this inner display is plastic. And honestly, there are warnings in the box of what not to do. With this, you got to be careful. Don't dig your nails into this. Overall, it definitely has a little bit less of a durable feel on the inner display. I'm definitely been babying it and stuff like that. And they do have a pre-installed screen protector, which they don't want you to remove. Um, and it definitely gets a little bit of dust balls in here. So not the easiest thing in the world to clean and not the most durable thing out there. But once you see what you're provided with, if you're just willing to baby it a little bit, look at this display right here. A super, it's like wider while it's not super tall as like the fold device, the Galaxy Fold device, it's nice and wide. So what this means is that if you wanna bring two applications side by side in here, let's go ahead and do that really quickly here. How about I bring in Chrome? You're gonna have a very expansive you know, display here for going ahead and clicking these things. So let's uh, YouTube Music, for example. So you could see right there, just you have like, basically a whole outer display pixel fold display right here on the inside on both sides so that's kind of what it feels like and to me it's pretty fantastic the multitasking because they're very like big and easy to read side by side displays so i think you'll really enjoy this if you are going to be split screening um while there isn't way to put three or four different applications it's been pretty fantastic there speaker grill and you can see just really well engineered build quality. The fingerprint location is pretty good as well because it, your thumb kind of naturally rests there. We do have ourselves the volume markers right here and at the bottom USB-C and the SIM card tray. Actually, that was the 5G antenna. The SIM card tray is on the bottom, my bad. And then if we open it up here, you'll see that it's, it's very thin. The only thing I would say about the build and the body is that it doesn't kind of like unfold fully flat. I would like to see Google improve this right here. It feels like it's kind of on an angle there, not a deal breaker, but I found myself going very lightly, just a little bit like that to get it to feel a little more flat. It doesn't really open. And even when you do that, it's still not fully, you know, flat when it's opened up. So they can improve, if they can find a way to improve that, that, that is a good improvement to this foldable uh, along with the durability. Um, once unfolded, let's take a look at how it looks on the, the other side. You can see just a really nice premium build looking product. So that's everything I have to say about the body of this phone. All right, so let's move on to the display. Let's talk about the folded panel to begin with. Now on the front, it is a 300, it's like a 408 PPI resolution or pixels per inch. So very sharp on the front, very smooth. Essentially all I can say, I don't gotta say much about this. This, this has felt like a 5.8 inch flagship panel on the front. We don't really gotta say much more. It has a punch hole like a lot of Android phones out there, including other Pixel devices. Um, for a better camera experience for the selfie on the front there. This right here is a little bit thicker than you'll find on other phones because you have to make space for the hinge. Bezels are pretty decent. They're not the thinnest out there, but they're still pretty decent. Um, overall, it's just been a really good front display on the Google Pixel Fold here. Um, very sharp, very smooth. And while it's not the most saturated, it's got more of a balanced colors, like more natural looking colors. If we go to display, there are two different options you can use here. Uh, go to colors, you can use natural or adaptive. Adaptive is more the saturated look, natural is even less saturated right there. I also find that because it's kind of like this comfortable 5.8 inch size, it's pretty easy to one hand this phone. Although the reach over here, because it's wider, is not as easy as the Candy Bar style Z Fold 4, but I don't really care because the Z Fold 4 on the front is really, even the Z Fold 5 is really, it's not very convenient to be on the front display. Whereas with this phone, like most reviewers have said, me included now, is that I've been using this for three weeks and I gotta tell you that the phone here is very useful on the front. Like I can use this, I've been using this phone all day on the front and sometimes I even forget to unfold it or I forget it's even a Google Pixel Fold until I remember to unfold it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I have this amazing display on the inside. So as far as the front display, I think most humans are gonna really like this front display more. It's just more natural to use day to day when out and about. 
and if you're going to use this thing all day heavy. Now, my inner display experience has also been pretty fantastic. I find this plastic, you know, displays to feel cheaper than glass and it doesn't really feel like glass at all. But once you get used to the display, I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's pretty sharp on the inside, but I do notice that it's not quite as bright. So sometimes when I went on the inner display, I did crank the brightness up even more uh, just to kind of match the front. The front does have a, a brighter display. I wish they would make the inner display just as bright, if not brighter than the outer one, because that's where you want a lot of, you know, vividness and brightness. A lot is on the inner display because it's kind of like the star of the show here. Um, some would argue that the front display on this phone is the star of the show, but what I really enjoy about it is, is it's width. it's, it seems wider uh, in this orientation than, you know, the competitor out there. And you can see that when you do open up Google TV and stuff, it's pretty nice. Um, I also found myself using this phone more in a portrait orientation quite a bit. And it's funny because most applications that are not really designed for the landscape actually open up properly in this portrait orientation. Now in this orientation, it's pretty tall, but it kind of feels like another nice way to use this phone. I also got to mention that the tabletop mode for this phone is pretty dope. And mostly because of the screen on this phone, the width of it. So when you put this in tabletop, you have a pretty good width right here. And then you have a pretty good width keyboard down here. So if you do want to go ahead and type something down here, you have a pretty nice keyboard experience to do so. So it's been pretty good there as well. I will say though, if you do use it in this portrait orientation, sometimes you can trigger the volume and the power button and the camera can get in the way down here, but sometimes it can give you something to grip onto as well. Not ergonomically the best in this position, but also not horrible. And then if you put it in this way, now you're getting your fingerprints all over the front of the display. So it's not always the most amazing thing to use it like this, but when you do, and you just kind of hold on to the bezels on the side, it does give you a pretty expansive display in that orientation as well. Now, one thing you can't really correct right now is the black bezels, but they're even thicker on here, I think, than the uh, competitors, some of the competitors out there. However, I pinch in sometimes just a little bit and then I get more of a filled, filled up display without having to pinch it and then you just crop everything out. But let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about with the tabletop mode. So right there, I just really enjoy how big this display is at the top here while going ahead and reading the comments and stuff like that. It's just nice. It's, it's pretty big and it kind of feels like a laptop there a little bit. And then in this view, if you want to go ahead and read comments, that's pretty good as well. But the viewing experience on here is, it's, I mean, look how big that is. It's like a whole large smartphone in the landscape orientation. What I like about this phone is that when you flip over to the front, it does take a second. I think Google needs to improve this, but once you go ahead and flip over to the front, it kind of just remembers the application you're in and then it goes ahead. And again, it takes like a second sometimes, but it does go ahead and open up the video on the inside. So that's it for display. Super smooth, super, you know, nice multitasking side by side applications. Portrait orientation is solid. Um, the Some of the applications don't properly optimized here, but you can go like this to bring them over to one side if you want to use them one handed. Um, I think this is something that's going to take some time, but overall it, it seems to work pretty well, even though they're not always fully optimized. But still, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic inner display. It's got really good specifications, I'd say. So what about the software? Well, the software, there's not much to talk about. If you've actually you've seen any videos on the Google Pixel series, you're getting basically all the same stuff here. A lot of the similar gestures are here, gesture navigations. You can still put the three button navigation here, tap to check, flip to shush. We have all the same stuff you're gonna find on the Google Pixel 7 Pro, 7a, and that's what's great about this. If you use the Pixel before, you're gonna feel right at home with this one, no issues whatsoever. They even got their tips and support down here. Just very clean Android software. It's the way Google intended it to be. This is the Google experience. And if you use Google applications and Google services, I mean, this is like an amazing product to have in your portfolio. If I go ahead and flip it over to front, then it feels even more like just a standard Pixel phone. But what I really like about this phone is that it just feels super premium. Having that inner display, the outer display, it definitely feels like a top level pixel experience. So I do really enjoy that. And there's not really much else to say. This is very simplistic, you know, app drawer here 
we do have our cells home screen with nice folders and you could you could do some customizations of course so with the material go over here to wallpapers and styles still in beta but you can theme the icons out you could change the app grids however you want and then of course this is android so you can go ahead and add as many as you want customizations through the play store third-party applications then up here i really like in the software i like how big the buttons are on the pixel they're just very easy to press and um, very easy to read very legible so they're just excellent this is excellent buttons here placement and there's a lot of customization up in here as well this also supports the google pay so you can use the wallet here to pay in stores and stuff like that and i've tried that out it's also very fast and efficient as well so let's talk about the google tensor g2 in here don't got to go on much about this a lot of people are concerned that this chip is not the fastest and while i can confirm that it isn't the fastest if you're in the gaming i actually have tried games and most games that are for android devices they actually perform quite well on this phone and it's a massive screen to go ahead and play games in addition to that i will tell you that some games are still not properly optimized for this phone you can see right here for sure but a lot of games they, they run very well this phone only got warm during the initial setup and if i really push it heavy outdoors 4k video i tend to feel it warm up a little bit in the back um, but it's it's been pretty great, you know, after it kind of settled into my usage, it doesn't get too warm if I'm just using it day to day. And it's AI features and performance is some of the best out there. So I would say not the top level performance, um, which you would expect on a foldable at this price point. Um, but definitely it's it's really good. Like it's very well optimized and it proves that it, unless you're somebody who is using a phone for your gaming system, I really don't think it's a big deal. The G2, the Sensor G2 is a Google chip. It's got great security with the Titan M2 and it's been fast enough for me for sure. And um, that's saying a lot because I use faster phones, but I haven't really had any lag or major stutters or major issues with this phone since I've been using it. Now the battery life is an area a lot of people wanna know, has it gotten better? And the answer is yes. Since my initial week, it has gotten better. Is it amazing? No, it never really got to the point where it was amazing. And I'm specifically referring to the inner display. I can watch this battery drain about four hours or so, maybe under four hours if I have the brightness high on the inner display. Um, but the outer display, it's an all day phone easily. And this is important because when you're using the phone throughout the day, you're going to be mostly on the outer display. And I think most people will easily be able to get through the day um, heavily. I was I was around 60 something percent, you know, around six, seven o'clock and in the 40s um, if I if I stayed out even later. So 40s, 30s on the front display all day. So I did have enough battery to watch some video to consume some content on the inner display in bed at nighttime. Um, with this phone. Also speaking of in bed at nighttime, surprisingly this feature comes in very well when you're kind of, you know, laying in your bed trying to prop your phone up, you know, sometimes it falls over your pillow or something, or you're trying to hold it and it's just awkward. You could actually place this like this and get on perfect angles right here to go ahead and see the content you're watching. Sometimes you want to watch it on the front like that. So that's where a foldable definitely does come into handy. And this one's no different, but yeah, battery life on this phone, pretty much an, uh, most of the day, all day phone on the front inner display, you will drain it a little bit quicker for sure, but still it's acceptable. It's not an amazing, but it's acceptable. And um, definitely it's not off putting. It's not something I would not consider this phone for, for sure. So when it comes to the cameras, these are Google pixel cameras. What do you expect? You know, they're going to do pretty well. Um, they have portrait, they have night sight, long exposure. The only difference is they're just not quite as sharp and saturated as Pixel 7 Pro photos. They're more like an A-line camera, I would say. And I, I want to see Google get, you know, Pixel 7 Pro, 8 Pro, Pro level Pixel photos, like from the same sensors from the Pro camera in the next model. That would be just amazing. I want to see top level cameras on a top level price fold. It's just, it's just worth it. And I'm not saying these aren't top level, but I'm saying they just don't match the Pixel 7 Pro, but they're still very good. And I've, I've still been happy with them. They're not, again, they're not a deal breaker for this phone. And I'm going to show you some samples. I just wish they were a little more punchy, a little more crispy, like the ones I find on the Pixel 7 Pro. But other than that, they still got all the other great features like night sight, skin tones being correct and all that other, all that other good stuff. And I still like how when you snap a photo, 
You don't got to do much. It processes that photo and it looks pretty darn good. Still pretty darn decent. Now I will say on the front facing camera, go like this. I wouldn't really use this inner one too much, although it is still better than the Z Fold because it's not under display. It's within the bezel. I use this one right here where you switch the screens, flip it around, and then you can use the back camera to take, let me get this wire out of the way. You can use the back camera to take really good photos here. And you'll see they just uh, turn out like as if you were taking it yourself. This is, this is dope. I really enjoy this. So anyway, that's it for the camera setup. I mean, we could go into the specs and all that, but we don't really need to. Video was also pretty good on here. Let me go ahead and flip it back to the inner camera. Hold on. Let's go ahead and flip this back to the inner camera. The video quality, 4K, 60 capabilities. Um, I did want to mention one thing before I show you my samples on the video quality. The ability to go like this and place this like this and then take photos was pretty amazing because you could use this like a little tripod thingy right here. And then you could adjust different things down here. It opens up new possibilities of how you can take video. That's pretty cool. You could do the same thing with the camera. And uh, that's just awesome. I believe you can even split screen on here. So you can actually use the camera in its own split screen while you're doing a calculation or you have your notes down here. You could even do that. So there's possibilities that can be had on a foldable that you just don't think of um, when you think about do you want a foldable. So here is some video with the Google Pixel Fold and the camera audio is coming directly from the phone itself. No external mics attached. Stabilization is on. This gives you a good idea how it will perform. If you're used to Pixel cameras, you'll probably like this. Let's go ahead and see how it does on the zoom. Pretty stable, we'll go in 5X. Pretty stable. Here's some more video with the Google Pixel Fold. Let's get a little bit of a look at this and you'll see pretty good so when it comes to audio performance let me go ahead and turn off bluetooth if you're watching this google i would love to see improvements to cooling on this phone that would be it's pretty good it's not amazing but it's better than what you would expect you know you wouldn't expect cheap quality speakers um, but it doesn't blow me away like some of the more premium phones out there. I think the audio could get a little bit louder for Google Pixel Fold 2, the next edition, whenever that comes, probably next year or the year after. Whenever they decide to upgrade this again, when they do, I would like to see better audio performance. Just a small gripe. It's nothing serious. It was good enough, but I think it could be a little louder. That's just a small uh, experience improvement. This phone has been pretty good in phone call quality reception. Haven't had any major issues. It doesn't have the fastest Bluetooth out there, 5.2. Some 
phones have 5.3 now. Um, not not a horror, it's not a deal breaker at all, but just letting you know that thing about this. And the fingerprint scanner has been very reliable. I really love this in dis- or non non in display fingerprint sensor because being here on the hardware, it just makes it super reliable and you can always kind of count on it. And USB-C down here is definitely very nice as well. This does have wireless charging as well. So is this worth the price of admission? $17.99? I'm not sure at full retail. I think it's needs enough improvements. Like I'm not sure it's really worth it at $17.99 full retail. Um, because the camera, I think is not quite the level of a flagship, like pixel seven pro camera, but I do think it's still worth a try. If you really enjoy, you know, trying out new innovations. And I think it's really worth it. If you trade in one of your older pixel phones, just do a trade in. It's easily worth it. Um, I do think that, you know, Google needs to improve a couple of things, mostly the camera battery life and, um, maybe the audio performance a little bit, maybe make the phone a little bit more durable. They could, if they want, try to make make the bezels thinner. The bezels didn't really bother me too much, but they do bother some people. Um, Overall, though, I love it. Great first attempt. I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it about an 8.5. It's it's a really solid phone and probably one of the best foldables out there, honestly, um, on the market today, for sure. It's just very unique. It's just an awesome little pocketable computer. And while it doesn't have, you know, a pen support or anything like that, it's simplistic, it's minimalistic, and it's been a joy to use. I really enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts on the Google Pixel Fold. Do you plan on picking one up? Are you skipping one, this one out? Are you picking up another phone? Or are you just saving up for one? You're going to get one eventually. Let me know your thoughts on the Google Pixel Fold down below in the comment section of this video. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, and informing, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.